Today we're going to build on our work of inverse proportion, but this time one variable is inversely proportional to the square root of another. That is to say, if one variable quadruples in size, it's multiplied by four, the other variable will decrease by the square root of that, or decrease by a factor of two. So one variable multiplies by four, the other one divides by two. If one is multiplied by nine, the other one would be divided by three. One variable is inversely proportional to the square root of the other. We're going to follow very much the same pattern as before. The first thing we do is we write out what we are doing in mathematical notation. So here you can see a statement. It's not a formula at the moment, it's just a statement using this sort of fish-like notation, which means proportional. Y is proportional to one over the square root of X. In other words, Y is proportional to the inverse of the square root of X. Now, we write this as a formula by introducing the constant K. And we're going to try to find the constant k by using these values of x and y here. I'll first do it in silence and then explain. OK, so let's go over and see what we've done here. Firstly, we took the formula that we generated and we substituted in the values that we knew. When x is 25, y is 4. y is 4, x is 25. We can see that we can simplify this by finding the square root of 25, which is 5. So we end up with k divided by 5 is equal to 4. We solve this for k by doing the inverse of divide by 5. We multiply both sides by 5 and that gives us k equal to 20. We can then go back up here and we can rewrite this formula not as y equals k over the square root of x but y equals 20 over the square root of x because we now know that in this case k is 20. We've been asked, once we've done this, if x is 4, what is y? We now write down the formula that we've generated, y equals 20 over the square root of x. And we substitute in the value of x that we now know, which is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So this is 10, and that's the value we're looking for. When x is 4, y is 10. Take your time now to have a look through this process, which mirrors the process we've used before. Copy it down as it's written here on the table. Explain the process one step at a time, and then have a go and question on the right hand side. Pause the video now and play it on when you're ready to go through the question on the right hand side.
So let's have a look at the question on the right hand side. Firstly, we write the statement. Y is proportional to the inverse of x, or the square root of x. We generate a formula by introducing a constant k, which we'll need to find. We've been told that when y is 6, x is 25. We substitute those two values in. When y is 6, x is 25. Let's just see where those come from. y is 6 and x is 25. We can simplify this by finding the square root of 25. In other words, 6 is equal to k over 5. We need to solve this to find k. At the moment, k is being divided by 5. The inverse of that is multiplied by 5. If we do that, we see that 30 is equal to k, or k is equal to 30. That allows us to rewrite this formula up here as y equals 30 over x squared. We've been asked if x is 4, what is y? We therefore need to take this newly generated formula, y equals 30 over x squared, and substitute in the value x equals 4. 30 over the square root of 4 is the same as 30 over 2, which is equal to 15. So when x equals 4, y equals 15.